take care of your people and your people will take care of you. So we used to say that about our gear. Take care of your gear and your gear will take care of you because you know you got your parachute. You want to take care of your parachute. You got your dive rig. You got your weapon. You want to take care of your weapon. It'll take care of you. Take care of your people and your people are going to take care of you. Without the people, there is no mission. There is no mission. Yeah. The, uh, that balance, which occasionally gets brought up, how do you balance? You know, what's more important, the people or the mission? Oh, well, the, the people. The people. Without the people, there's no mission. And if you have one mission that you're going to do, I guess you can put the, put the mission above the people, but you're not going to be in that situation. You're not. So the people come first. And by the way, this is important. If there's alignment in what you're doing, what your mission is should help the people. So when you're in combat and you're going out and you're taking the fight to the enemy, well, guess what? Now the now you can win the war. Now you can get the people home to their families. Now we can protect the world from fascism or from Nazism or from the Imperial Japanese Army or from communism. That's what these things are doing. So when you're out there a soldier, you're taking care of your people by helping to win the war. Those should be aligned. That's why you had disalignment or unalignment in Vietnam where people are saying, hey, wait a second, Vietnamese aren't doing anything to me. I don't care if this is communist or not. It doesn't affect me. And so we're not aligned. It's a problem. Some people, the people that were saying, hey, we, th- we believe in the domino theory. We think it's all going to fall down. We need to stop communism here. Those people were aligned and were proactively fighting the war. Some people weren't. Same thing in a company. If I am trying to build a factory so that I can take my people and put them in a better situation where they have better working conditions, it's going to help them. If I'm trying to get my team to sell more widgets, well, Jason, how many widgets did you sell? I only sold three. Well, hey, Jason, you need to sell more. Why? Well, because I want you to be able to save money for college for your kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the better you do, the better we do, the better we do, the better you do. Because by the way, when you sell more widgets, we and Echo sells more widgets, now we can produce more widgets, that lowers our cost to produce, now we can lower our prices so you can sell even more widgets, so we can. So the mission and the men should be aligned. The mission and the people should be aligned. The goals should help. If what I'm doing is saying, hey, Jason, sell more widgets, and you say, why? And I say, because I want to line my pockets more, What? we're not aligned. We're not aligned. But if I'm saying, hey, sell more widgets so we can lower the price point, so you can have more job security, so you can you know, buy, get a down payment for your house, all those things. We want things to be aligned. When they're not aligned, that's when we're gonna have problems. It helps them. Yeah. It helps them stay alive. The, the contrary to that is, or the uh, opposite dichotomy of that is, hey, I, I'm just gonna impose my rules on these people. They're not gonna know why. They're not gonna know how it helps them. They're not gonna know that smoking in a in a watch position at night can get you killed by a sniper so instead you just mandate these rules and if you hey i don't care if i'm popular or not that's not a good attitude to have if you're not look you shouldn't be doing things to be popular but if people don't like you that work for you that's also a problem that's also a problem and if that what i just said makes you shudder a little bit and think you know i'm not sure if i'm on board with that you need to check yourself Quite frankly, you need to check yourself. I haven't worked for a leader that was a good leader where everyone said, yeah, I don't like that guy. They might say something like, hey man, he can be a bit hard, but he makes sense, but he's doing it for the right reasons, but sometimes we're a little bit too slack. The the, the, the leader that, hey, we all hate him, but we're gonna do what he says, doesn't really exist, man. And then, okay, well, 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 what if they're just going to take advantage of you? Guess what? There's going to be some people that are going to try. There's going to be, you got a team of 20 people. There's going to be two or three of them that are looking to cut corners, looking to slack off. That's true. It's true in a SEAL platoon, for crying out loud. In a SEAL platoon, where they go through hell week, and they go through buds, and they're highly selecting all that stuff. Yeah, some of those people get to a platoon, and they don't want to do shit. No. They want to freaking cut corners. They want to go home early. They don't care. That, that's what happens. You get those guys in a platoon and they're not going to, they might not commit hanging offenses, right? They might not like skip work or, you know, leave their weapon unattended or something like that, which, okay, that if they're that bad, you can get rid of them, but they know where the line is and they just, they just tiptoe on that line. 
And so there's people like that. There's people like that in every organization. And if you then treat everyone in your organization as if they're that person that's trying to get away with what they can, and that's how you treat everyone, you're not treating with respect, you're micromanaging them, and it's gonna come back and haunt you. You run the Boston Marathon, and people love that race. They run so fast because for 26.2 miles, there's a motherfucker just, come on, man, you got it, you can do it. You know who you are when there's no motherfucker out there when you're running. And you're at mile 75, 150 mile race, and nobody cheering for you. You're broken, you're fucking defeated. It's you and you alone in your fucking head. And I stayed that way for the better part of 30 fucking years. Trying to figure this shit out. And once you figure it out, you look at your, everybody say, hey, so you're all broken now. You know, is that how you want to be? Yep, yep. If you can feel, if I can put my brain in your fucking head, you said the same fucking thing. You would no longer think I was fucking crazy. You no longer think I was sadistic. You realize, motherfucker, this guy found it. He found it. We're all looking for this feeling. We're all looking for this feeling. People look at me because I don't always smile and I'm not always jovial sure, or yeah. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man. Don't get it twisted, dude. People see, oh my God, you look in his eyes, you see like almost an emptiness because you understand. Mm. So many people who are judging us don't understand. They, they don't want to look in the eyes of me. They don't want to look in the eyes and study them. What you see in me is fucking real life. That's why people, a lot of people resonate with me because I skip through all the fluff. I skip through all the fluff. Fuck that, I can't fluff shit. I can't, why? I don't know what that is. Life didn't present me with fluff. So I'm expressing to you what I know a lot of us are going through. A lot of us are going through fucking hell. Maybe not as bad as me, maybe worse than me. Sure. But they don't know how to express it because we're supposed to live in a fucking world where we have to talk a certain way. We have to walk a certain way. We have to act a certain way. A kinder, gentler world. Nothing gets handled in that fucking world. You stay fucked up in that world. You stay in a world of things will get better because someone said they would and I need to find peace no, you need to go to fucking war with yourself, man. At the end of that fucking war, you'll sit back all damaged and bruised and scarred up and fucked up, and maybe your so ass muscles so tight that you may lose two inches on your fucking body. Who knows? But then that fucking war, you're gonna sit back on the couch, maybe have a fucking glass of water, if you drink a beer, you drink a beer. The war may be 30 fucking years, but when it ends, you will know what the fuck it's all about then. And then you'll find your fucking peace. You'll find your fucking peace then. But until then, you'll always be searching to find that nice, kind book that guides you beyond all your personal suffering and shit. That miracles your fucking ass to peace. <laughs> it doesn't happen, man. Maybe it does for some people, but you're just scratching the surface of real life.